There's no food that's good for everybody, but there are foods that are bad for everybody. You know, there are tens of thousands of chemicals in the environment that have never been tasted for safety. Matter of fact, we're the test. Today, we're joined by guest expert, Reed Davis. Reed is a board certified holistic health practitioner and a certified nutrition therapist. And notably, he's the founder of the Functional Diagnostic Nutrition and the FDN certification course. Are there any things here that you believe are just generally like toxic and crappy? Sugar is really a bad thing to consume on a, any kind of regular basis whatsoever. If, if you're just going to Dr. Google and typing in something, you'll get a million answers. And some of them might even be right for your neighbor or your kid, but not right for you. That's what's hard to distinguish. Hey there, my friends, it's Dr. Anthony Balduzzi, and I want to welcome you back to another episode here on the Fit Father Project and Fit Mother Project podcast. Today, we're joined by guest expert, Reed Davis. Reed is a board certified holistic health practitioner and a certified nutrition therapist. And notably, he's the founder of the Functional Diagnostic Nutrition and the FDN certification course, which is more or less some advanced training to help health practitioners um, figure out the root cause of chronic illness. We're talking about things that people feel like they can't solve, chronic inflammation, mystery illnesses, not feeling well, can't move the needle. Well, Reed has kind of dedicated his life to help to bridge the gap. And, and he's empowered over 4,000 graduates in over 50 countries who are now experts in functional lab testing and holistic lifestyle medicine. Personally, Reed has served as a health director at a wellness center in Southern California for over 10 years with over 10,000 clients. And he's one of the most experienced clinicians in the field of functional lab testing. So in today's conversation, we're going to go deep with Reed about GI health, food sensitivities, the gut brain connection, but also open you up to this world of functional lab testing, which is different than just regular blood work and stuff like that, that you might get from a doctor. And if you're someone listening who is dealing with something that you haven't had answers to, I think this conversation is going to be very enlightening. Um, and if you're someone who's already on a, on a good state of health, then I think the stuff that Reed talks about, even from a philosophical basis of the importance of the gut is just going to further cement your knowledge and your understanding about how all these body systems are so interconnected. So Reed, welcome to the show, my friend. Hey, thanks very much, Dr. Anthony. Hope I can live up to all that. <laughs> well, this is your life and, um, and I, and I appreciate your experience in coming on. I want to ask you first, I think it, it, it means a lot for us to know why you got passionate about dedicating your life, you know, not being in the traditional medical field, but still going so deep and even creating, you know, curriculum to train health practitioners. Like what prompted you to get into this field? Yeah. Thanks for that. Uh, I've always had a curiosity for the body. I read a book when I was 19, which is uh, over 50 years ago now, called Healing Ourselves. It was very enlightening. It was a, it was more or less a Japanese guy came to California and, and did some lectures. And someone took notes and turned it into a book. So if over 50 years ago, we were learning about taking care of ourselves. And so... That always intrigued me, and it was always in the back of my mind. I actually had a couple other careers. As a matter of fact, in the 90s, I was a environmental paralegal and conservationist. I was working on saving the whole planet. Just always had, you know, good Boy Scout type guy. So, so saving the planet, and it occurred to me after seeing all these things going on that, wow, what, what about people? What's it doing to people? So I started talking to my son's chiropractor who had a wellness center. There was lots of things going on there. And and I ended up working there and mostly to build the business. But this is where the passion comes from. I've always wanted to help. I love being a helper. But uh, she offered me the opportunity to attend some nutrition classes with her as she got her diplomat in nutrition. I could get this nutritional therapy certificate. And she said, Unbelievably, and you can work on the patients in between your classes for experience. Well, who wouldn't jump at that? You know, like, so I did. And uh, and that's when I fell in love with working with people face to face and trying to really help them because I saw what they're going through. Now, I hadn't gone through it myself. I'd never really seen a doctor. I was really healthy and had some dental work and a few motorcycle accidents and some sports injuries and things. Otherwise, I didn't know what the system was like for people out there. And I was shocked, amazed. What do you mean you've seen six or eight or 10 practitioners already and aren't better yet? Like, 
either that's a ripoff or some kind of misunderstanding. And it's more of a misunderstanding, I can tell you. But but uh, that's what got me started was working face to face in the clinic and seeing that people were trapped in this. At the time, I called it the cycle of trial and error, uh, six, eight, ten, spending lots of money uh, and not getting any results. So that got me to go to work. I knew. And this is where I'll conclude it. Matter of fact, out riding my bike one day in the uh, hills of Southern California, I'm thinking these people, these people, like, like, why are they putting their health in someone else's hands when you need to take responsibility? And, uh, you know, I'm going to be the last guy they need to see. Now, that seems like the joke part, but, you know, because I had a lot to learn. But I'll, I'll conclude with this, Dr. Anthony. I had nothing to unlearn. You know, I, I was a really good researcher, writer, and things like that already. So I knew I could sort of sort it out, you know, to some extent. I love it. That's a really cool journey that's clearly been propelled by just genuine service and saying yes to things. And now you're here and you've literally developed a curriculum that's helping practitioners help more people. So, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, like it's, it, I feel proud for you. I, I don't know if you take the take the time to smell the roses, but it's really beautiful to even hear about what oh, came yeah. from. I, my wife makes me. All right, good. I'm glad. So let's talk about functional lab screening and how that's yeah. different than maybe just like regular blood work or even specialized blood work. Like, what's this whole world of functional diagnostics and uh, and and all that stuff? So it's a great question. And keep in mind that at the time, everybody coming in the office had already been to some practice. They had their blood work done. And had been told in many cases, there's nothing wrong with you. I would add, yet. <laughs> Look, so your problems didn't reach a, a threshold of being medical, but still the people knew something was wrong. So my doctor says everything looks normal, but I don't feel normal. I feel terrible, you know. And so I started learning about these functional lab work, to answer your question. At the time, we just called them alternative. It went from alternative to complementary, and then it went to integrative, and then it went to functional. Now they're calling it lifestyle and whatever. I think it hasn't fully evolved, frankly, but it's headed in the right direction. But for me, I couldn't lay down a diagnosis, not a medical doctor. Um, I had to just try to find labs. Thank goodness I lived near a lab company, could go there on weekends and hang out with the scientists. And... And I started running these labs that were just looking for causal factors, mm -hmm. not medical diagnosis. And that's really a clear distinction. Remember, a lot of them had been turned away. You don't have a medical diagnosis. Well, that's free. That's free reign. That's now it's our backyard. You know, we can say, hey, look, your your hormones are out of balance. Your immune system is is overactive or underactive. Mm -hmm. And your digestion system isn't working well. Your detoxification system. There's markers for that. Even back then, 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so for 10 years, the next 10 years, I spent running and reviewing thousands of labs for thousands of people. So that's where I recognized some patterns. That's really all it was. That's a lot, but that's all it was. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, recognizing patterns and then, you know, listening to people and always wanting to help them. I always wanted to do the right thing for them and making every person that came in our office a study of one. So no cohorts, no um, generalizations, just you, Mrs. Smith or Mr. Jones or, or, you know, this is what's going on with you. And that had great success. That system started to outperform anything else they'd ever tried before. Mm -hmm. So it was a study of one mentality. And the thank goodness for the lab work, really smart scientists and, and lab rats and you know, they weren't interested in medical diagnoses either. They also weren't doctors, so they mm -hmm. they had no interest in that. Just here's a marker. It tells us what's really going on here. And then I also had to develop, I'll just finish with, uh, what should they go do? Here's what's wrong. Well, how do I fix it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, it's what you do at home that matters. It's not coming in the office for your chiro or acupuncture or massage and nutrition even. It's what you do at home that matters. Mm -hmm. So I developed a, a home, something that people can follow. It's called the Dress for Health Success, D-R-E-S-S. -S. stands for Diet, Rest, Exercise, Stress Reduction, and Supplementation. And that's, that's the system <laughs> that, 
that has helped tens of thousands of people now. I love it. And I know that DRESS acronym, now that you spelled it out, is completely in sync with what people are doing inside our communities in terms of improving their nutrition, exercising, stress management, yeah. supplementation, all of that. That's, that's like so aligned. I want to stay on the lab testing for a little bit though. Okay. Like what are some of the tests that you like to run? I know it's probably individual based on what someone's presenting with, et cetera, but like, are there, describe some of those major patterns or even sure. for someone listening, who's curious about this, some of the major functional tests that we do run to maybe assess something like thyroid or adrenals or GI tract, et cetera. Fantastic. So I have another acronym for you, which if you like dress, you're going to like this one because what we explore with the lab work, saliva, urine, blood, stool, we explore the hidden H I D D E N healing opportunities. And that stands for hormone, immune, digestion, detoxification, energy production, and nervous system balance. You're no stranger to that, both the autonomic yeah. and the somatic and things. Yeah. So, so this H I D D E N can be done again with at home, self-directed type of testing. We ship the kits out. You put your samples in there, goes off to the lab and we get the results and we go over them and we clinically correlate them. So again, we look at the hormones mm -hmm. really, do you want me to go through each one? And yeah, I think that'd be really valuable. Yeah. Okay. So, so with hormones, you know, it's not just the sex hormones, it's your catabolic anabolic, the balance between cortisol and DHEA is really yeah. important. Because if you're overly catabolic, it means your body's breaking down. You have so much stress that your body isn't building back up in a balanced fashion. So you're breaking down. Well, that will next affect both the sex hormones, mm -hmm. your estrogen, your progesterone, your testosterone, and so on, but also the immune system. So mm -hmm. your, your uh, gut lining, the, the secretory IgA, we call it. Yeah. And other things are factored in, like melatonin levels and that. So that's just one test that you can go home and do, and it's not real expensive, but the, the, the information, the data is invaluable. It can really open up the door to all the other things. Again, so we talked about hormone, immune. Uh, there's more of that on the next test, which is a simple urine test. Mm -hmm. Easy to do at home, easy to send in, not real expensive. Great information on digestion. Do you have good bacteria in the gut? Do you have a good... Uh, you know, biosis there instead of dysbiosis, it, it will identify a dysbiosis. But you need that good bacteria to break down, especially protein. Protein is the source of amino acids. Amino acids are the uh, uh, fundamental to neurotransmitters. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about gut brain connection and things like that, well, if you're not breaking down, absorbing, especially proteins very well, you will have imbalances in your neurotransmitters and, and feel weird and mm -hmm. different moods and things like that. So there's all these connections. And um, what's different about our work, I have to say this here, is that each one of these markers or analytes could be looked at as a dot. And you're used to seeing dots because your physician might have told you, oh, your thyroid's low. Here's what to do to bring it up. Medication, kind of a replacement, even with the sex hormones and things that people are doing hormone replacement through mm -hmm. what we do is try to connect the dots in a different way so that what really is breaking down in the body. So you've heard it said that all disease begins in the gut. Hippocrates said it and other great people. Well, what I found out is that it circles around there enough that it could be, you know, considered as uh, so you know, that rudimentary, but really it's stress, you know, in it's multiple forms that throw this catabolic anabolic, then the sex hormones, then the immune system. Well, then you're down in the gut, you have the dysbiosis starting to occur and you end up with hyperpermeability, liver congestion, excessive oxidative stress, even overgrowth of serious things like uh, parasites, bacteria, funguses, viruses, whatever, those and biofilms in that. And so you've got this whole constellation of healing opportunities identified. And you mentioned food sensitivities in the introduction. Heck yeah, you're going to have more of them when your gut's in that kind of shape. It's dysbiotic, maybe worse, again, with the overgrowth and infestations of biofilms. You end up with this hyperpermeability. Again, stress itself can cause that from the inside or it can happen through what you ingest. And 
all these things can be sorted out if you run the right labs. So again, hormone immune digestion detoxification, really critical to look at what can you improve? Mm-hmm. If you get the data, it gets you focused on exactly what you can improve. And it, it tends to get a high level of compliance, uh, yeah, especially sure. from our practitioners. Makes sense. You know, I mean, someone's got to be so enrolled when they feel like, hey, this is actually a system or an aspect of my, of my health constellation that is out of balance. And now you have protocols to help, you know, course to correct those. So from here, I'd love to talk in a way that's going to be generally ac- applicable for everyone listening. And, and this could be in the form of good lifestyle practices that you've identified that help support these different areas of health. Um, or if you have anything you feel like is very important to share in any of these individual areas, like protocols are important specifically for hormones or for energy production, especially for people when they're getting into their 40s, 50s, 60s and beyond. I'd love to get there into some of the practices and habits that are foundational from what you've seen. Sure. Well, and feel free to interrupt and, and bring me back around. It is because this is so fascinating that once you start going down these uh, potential rabbit holes, it, it's pretty easy to get caught up in it. But generally speaking, remember, I was in an office where I was the non-licensed pair. I was the guy that couldn't diagnose things. That turned out to be such a blessing because I had to dig deeper. I even had the physicians there saying, well, you really got your work cut out for you. You know, you've got to figure out what's really wrong and teach them how to fix it. And so I had to learn not only the lab testing and how to correlate the you know, identify those healing opportunities and correlate them with the person. This is the first thing that happens is people go, wow, now I see why I feel this way, where they've been told nothing's wrong with you or it's just your thyroid or it's just this or just that. You know, one diagnosis that left everything else off the table. So now they see why they feel so badly. What do I do about it? So this idea of of uh, uh, creating a visual for people with these multiple healing opportunities, that's critical to the work. It's foundational. But uh, since I couldn't write a prescription, and, and that being a blessing, I also didn't want to just sell supplements because I'd been trained in that. That was part of the training that I went to originally was, was take this for that. And, yeah, it's better that it's natural and not a drug because there's almost no side effects safe and you know somewhat effective but not not good enough so supplements are part of it but i also had to learn well how do you eat how does an individual figure out what what to eat Mm -hmm. uh the percentages of protein fat and carb that ratio is critical and it varies from person to person in very very interesting ways depending on the person so you have to understand the other things we look at, oxidative rate and autonomic dominance and things like that. But it, so so diet became critical. And at the time, for instance, you know, I was reading, I read Atkins and I thought, oh, that sounds, you know, Atkins worked perfectly for me around 2000. Mm-hmm. Well, heck, I tell someone to use Atkins and they go, oh, I love that too. Yeah, we're, we're all buddies. <laughs> tell someone else, no effect. Didn't help them one bit. Tell someone else, and they go, Ugh, I, I got worse on that diet. So it's not the food, it's who's eating it that matters. And that's a mm-hmm. critical concept of a word. So diet has to be individualized. And then, of course, you got to go to bed on time. There's rest. And I've learned to rest. I don't, uh, I get up very early. I go to bed early. I get up very early. I get a lot of work done before a lot of people are out of bed. And I'm always done by usually one o'clock. You get the whole rest of the day to, to have fun and stuff, ride my bike and work in my garden. I, I love to uh, landscape and things. I have a lot of property and stuff. So I, I like doing other stuff besides work. So I get it really early, get it done. But there's other forms of rest. So diet, remember it's dress, D-R-E-S-S. So diet, critical, individualized, rest, individualized other people are later sleepers me i could take a five minute nap in the afternoon and be as fresh as first thing in the morning it's amazing you need to rest your body and your emotions even your mental emotional and uh psycho spiritual and and all kinds of rest diet rest the e is exercise of course i don't think we need to talk a lot about that on a fit podcast but you get it you know sittings then is smoking 
but it's the, the same program for a 22 year old is not the same as for me. I'm 70, you know, so I'm not doing those kind of workouts anymore. Mm-hmm. Close as I can get, but you know, and, and, um, you know, I had a, we, back in the day at the, at the office, there was a trainer down the street at a women's gym who kept hurting people and sending them to us. And we appreciated the business, you know, and it was kind of getting her off the hook, but why was she hurting so many people? She had a one size fits all exercise program and that's wrong. So diet, rest, exercise, each one to the individual. And then the two S's in dress are stress reduction and supplementation. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, again, I supplementation is important, but, you know, it's supposed to support or stimulate or even self-treatment or just the, the purest form of supplementation is uh, just to substitute for what's missing from food. Mm-hmm. It doesn't, most commercially grown food does not have enough vitamins, minerals, essential fatty acids, antioxidants, trace elements, phytonutrients, and so on. So you, you need to take extra because it's, it's not in the food anymore. It's, it's been sort of... Uh, uh, you know, r- removed <laughs> with bath soil. So now, so that's DRE st- supplement. And then the other S is stress reduction. Mm-hmm. And we could spend a whole chapter on that one, man. It's just, you know, that stress is, it really is the root of all evil. It's also, there is hormesis and there's good stress, you stress, we call it. Um, I love doing dangerous things. I find it very um, exhilarating and it's a stress that I find keeps me young and alive and doing, but there's a bad stress. And that's the kind that you might not even know is occurring. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, if your boss is a jerk and you yell, you know, some, you know, you know if your uh, spouse is misbehaving or something, you have to have a little conversation, you know, money's always thing, kids, whatever. So that's the mental emotional. It's, it's big. And so is the trauma. You, you know, we well know that, you know, if you had a car accident five years ago and didn't fix it, you could be in trouble today. The yeah. aches, the pains, they affect sleep and normal and everything too. So stress reduction is huge. And the area that I learned to really, uh, I don't like the word specialize, but focus on because I could do something about it was um, the hidden internal stressors. You know, like you mentioned, food sensitivities, that's a big stressor. And oh, by the way, everyone has them. And another thing is you can kill two, remember it's D-R-E-S-S. So with one test, you can remove a lot of stress on your body, but you also perfect your diet mm-hmm. by getting rid of the food. So it's it's a two, it's a two for one, uh, double the bang for the buck uh, on that test. The same thing kind of with, the uh, parasite, bacteria, fungus, the microbiome testing, which we know, that has to be in balance. So these are tremendous stressors. There's other toxins and things we can measure or we can measure the result of those toxins, like when we do the liver function test. We're not looking for hepatitis. That's medical. We're looking just for congestion. Like you don't even know you have it. And by the way, a study just came out uh, recently, this year anyway, Um, from a guy at the University of California, San Diego, the stress that you had may not even exist anymore. It's gone. But the downward spiral that it kicked off metabolically is still working against you. So that's why I don't look for the quote unquote root cause anymore. I've kind of given up on that, Dr. Anthony, because there's never one. There's always multiple root causes and you don't hear people talking much about the interaction between them. Hmm. So you have all these causal factors. They're affecting each other in ways that you can't singly measure in many cases. And I'm a guy who teaches lab work. I know a little bit about it. You can't singly measure some of these interactions. You have to have a system of extrapolating and just, you know, then applying these principles of healing. So that's why I gave up root cause. There's never one. They're affecting each other. I just call it metabolic chaos. Mm -hmm. And that has become our one concern is how do you sort it out and resolve it? Not just this stress or that stress, but everything. And then uh, how can you, what kind of a therapy, if you will, or self-directed lifestyle program 
ecologically sound, you know, um, epigenetically sound? What kind of lifestyle can you apply that doesn't treat one thing? We're not physicians trying to treat your this or that. We don't care about labels. We want to have an effect on every cell, tissue, organ, and system at once, the entire organism. And so that's why what we do is safe, it's self-directed, it's not practicing medicine. It, it's like there's enough diagnoses to go around. You know, we don't want to add one more to their list. If I had one, I would call it metabolic chaos, and it means everything. I love it. Now, if if you could say, insofar as the a key point of this conversation is we're all individual, and it's important to assess the individual facets that are unique to us that are causing dysfunction and then how we can bring those back to harmony. When it comes to a self-directed health plan, are there, are there certain practices that are ubiquitous for all people, like good tenants of a, a core way of living, like advice that you believe is just like kind of natural law based wisdom that fits into almost everyone's health plan. Now, whether someone has liver congestion or an issue with cortisol, DHEA imbalance, and they need to address the root of that, like, is there stuff that you can say transcends and goes in pretty much most people's plans that would be beneficial for just a thriving human who stays in metabolic uh, order and metabolic thriving? You know, I'd love to answer that really intelligently and philosophically and in, in a wise manner, but I'm just, just wise enough to say that I'm still, I'm working on the ultimate solution. I believe it begins somewhere in the mind with your point of view and your attitude and that that's the foundation for me and my wife. We get up, we try to be respectful and, and loving uh, of our each other and, and the universe, so to speak. And uh, we know that we're not in control of that, that there's an intelligence that exists that we, you just kind of want to be in line with. <laughs> and so then that would give you the uh, awareness or um, self-awareness, I guess, yeah. to behave yourself in a way that's congruent, that's in li alignment with building these health building principles. Mm -hmm. So the DRESS is just, in the, just, it's just a way of organizing it. It's everyone knows you got to eat right, go to bed on time and move your body and try to reduce stress, stay away from bad people and bad things. And supplements are helpful. You know, I take a lot of them. Um, but it's, I think it begins with that point of view and this, the self awareness. And again, I'm, I'm no one's guru. I'm just working on it myself. <laughs> I appreciate that. It was a, like, I mean, honestly, like a surprising, but beautiful answer, because I think when we are we're able to really sink in kind of get connected to our own conscious and intuition. Like we, we know where we are deviating from we that know. whole is. And we so know. then that's where it's self-directed. And so it's like, I'll, I'll speak right now, frankly, like I'm in a very busy season. I think my rest area could dramatically be improved. And like, that's the one area that then I can lean in and focus on. And what I love about your framework too, is if we're constantly checking in and assessing, and it's not necessarily a problem that we are temporarily deviating as long as we have the awareness to course correct. And it doesn't become a very, very deep process that needs to be unwound. And there's probably changes in different seasons. You know, maybe there are certain times where exercise is not happening as much as it is in other seasons. And so you always are kind of auto-regulating. And isn't that exactly what everything in nature is doing is, is responding to a continuously changing environment and looking to create homeostasis. So true. So true. Of course, I live in Southern California where you don't have any excuses. <laughs> There's no excuse. You Good know, point. like, you know, it, when I lived in Cleveland, it was a little different. You know, I, had a yeah. better time. I was oh. thinking about Cleveland people, but I realized you, you have nice bike weather year round. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, um, so, so no excuses here, but, but you, you nailed it a couple ways. One, individuality. Everyone's a study of one. In our world, there's no cohort. So, you know, it's not the food, it's who's eating it that matters. That's really true. And I have lesson after lesson on uh, getting that right and so on. So so the answer is, as you noted, and, and you had a great term for it there, just the uh, framework that I have is just, it's that's just the uh, framework. It's just that you, that overlays or overlies the individual and their way of thinking and things. You can't, 
um, it it's based in a way of thinking, but you have to have that way of thinking. You have to mm-hmm. be a little conscious and and pursue and and kind of respect self awareness and that and be able to reflect and so that we're not just you know like when a mouse runs past a cat, it doesn't have any choice. It's going for it, you know, because there's no there's no little space between mm-hmm. right and it doesn't know right and wrong. It just knows you know. Get it's them out. purely instinctual, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we we have that conscience, consciousness. We have that consciousness that's in between stimulus and response. We can reflect ever so, you know, momentarily, but then that that space can be expanded the more you uh, develop it. Nice. All right, and I'm 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 intentionally being a little pokey with you because I think you're the man of the personalization, and and it's a powerful message. Are there any things here that you believe are just generally across the board, like toxic and crappy? Like I'm thinking about things like glyphosate sprayed wheat or you yeah. know, just eating like candy or just like drinking like wine out of a box. Like, I don't know, like, or like there's, it's, TV. Yeah, smoking <laughs> or TV. Yeah. Like what are the, what are some of the things you just generally say, like, are the kind of, you know, call them no nos or just generally aren't supportive of health that you are, it would be, well, I'd have to yeah. force you to ingest or do. Well, it probably largely based on my background in environmental law and, and conservation is how toxic the planet is becoming. You know, there are thousands, tens of thousands of chemicals in the environment that have never been tasted for safety. Matter of fact, we're the test. And what you see is all this cancer and all these, uh, you know, metabolically unfit, unsound uh, things. And it's, it's just horrendous. So, so, but I want to address it from a slightly different angle. Um, there's no food that's good for everybody, but there are foods that are bad for everybody. Like if you take sugar, you know, white sugar, and, and you know, I'm not saying don't um, ever have anything sweet or, you know, there's different things going on, but, but generally um, sugar is really a bad thing to consume on a, any kind of regular basis whatsoever. There are bad fats. You know, there's all these processed oils. I have an app. This is a tip for your listeners mm-hmm. that I love. It's called the Seed Oil Scout, SOS. And you can go download it for free. There's a paid version, but Seed Oil Scout. So you can pick and choose your restaurants based on what kind of oils they use. And one of the measurements we use is the omega-6 to 3 ratio, which needs to be under 4 to 1. If we're walking around here in this country with ratios of 20 to 1, 25 to 1, 30 to 1, which is why we have so much heart disease and, you know, high blood pressure and all kinds of atherosclerosis, arterial sclerosis, and so on and so on and so on, inflammatory processes. And, and so there's, there's a lot of things that you're in that category, toxins, toxic environment, toxic... There's even toxic people. Mm-hmm. So um, <laughs> you, if without a framework, as you called it, I think it's really hard to, to get along. If, if you're just going to Dr. Google and typing in something, um, you'll get a million answers. And some of them might even be right for your neighbor or your kid but not right for you that's what's hard to distinguish so that's why our company t-shirts say uh tests don't guess you know like i didn't wear one today but um and that's a common phraseology it's it's not unique to our uh, business or my my uh my course that i teach or any of that mm-hmm. stuff but yeah so we we look for the hard data that's mm-hmm. what helps us a lot that's our framework the mentality as i said you're a study of one, and well, what do your numbers say about you? And so not only do we have this, I said the H-I-D-D-E-N, that would apply to a person who's in trouble and wants to get out of trouble. You live yourself into something unwanted, and it doesn't matter what the symptom, from migraines to menstrual periods, you know, men, bad menses, what, what all this stuff, um, indigestion to, to you name it. Um, so you have a, a framework that will sort that out and then the mentality that it's your responsibility and no one else's again nice. just, just finally on that i was out riding my bike and i'm i'm working you know i'm at the office 25 years ago 
And I'm thinking, why are these people putting their health in someone else's hands? Especially when that person, it's not that they don't know what they're doing. It's just that it's the wrong ladder. It's the wrong wall to have your ladder on. If you've been told you don't have a medical condition, you know, everything looks, I will say, yet, you know, and, and so there's all those markers. This was my point. We have the markers that will see what the trouble is and help you fix it. But then what? Well, there are longevity and other what we call predictive markers where it might take 10 years for something to show up. But you can start detecting your advancement or you know maintenance uh, against that thing. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Perlmutter um, just yeah. did a book on uric acid called Drop Acid. Everyone should read that book. And trust me, you'll start watching how much sugar you eat because it's just not a good thing. And so, but so there's these predictive markers, you know, everyone knows, everyone knows A1C, but there's even better ones, mm -hmm. even earlier and more sensitive uh, testing for these kind of things. So that it gives me another question to ask you on testing. What, what tests are you doing for yourself personally on an ongoing basis at this point, I imagine to just continue with the longevity journey and have high function as you age. Is there stuff that you're running on a, you know, a, a regular enough periodic sure. basis? Yeah, for sure. I do the stool testing. Um, I travel a lot to different other countries. And um, so I want to know if I've picked up anything weird, especially if you feel you ever got sick, you got whatever, you, you know, so that I do my food sensitivities testing because they change. This is weirdness, but we use the mediator release test and it'll pick up your current food sensitivities. Um, the genetic ones, the ones that you know, uh, like I never did well with, I don't know, tomatoes. They give me a rash. You already know that. Those are IgE reactions. Mm -hmm. So our test looks a little deeper, a little more sensitively at what's, uh, what's causing inflammation somewhere in your body, even if it's just in the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. so, so there's tests like that that I like to run. My wife and I have a lot of fun with it, and you can even get kind of, you know, who can improve the most, you know, just there's lots of things. Are you really taking those supplements? Because we'll know, <laughs> we'll know because, you know, uh, you're spending a lot of money on them. So why not test to see if they're having the effect that you want? So there's lots of things to play like that. But, but I also have to say I'm spoiled because every lab company wants me to be using their labs in my training. So they, I got kits behind this screen is a stack of them that I haven't done yet because, you know, it's just, I got my tests I like, I, I, I'm very happy, I'm pretty fit, um, enjoying good life. So I'll do them for the, as a, you know, because I said I would, and check it out. And you know what, you, every now and then I come across a, a better test. Nice. That's, that's a, it's a cool position that you're in to be able to be exposed to all that and to test and to know what like, you like and works for you. Are there any personal longevity practices that you really believe in? Are you into extended fasting, strength training, sauna, cold plunge, different kinds of light, uh, yeah, specific man, I, supplements? I'm not sure. I don't love the cold plunge. <laughs> so no cold plunge noted on that. I, I don't love it. I, I mean, I have a pool and it's, it's cold right now. Uh, if I don't heat it, even in Southern California, it gets cold at night now. It's kind of winter time. So, um, but yeah, I love the sauna. I love my, um, uh, I have one right behind the screen again. You know, I've got um, the, the near infrared one. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. And it doesn't take long to just really turn on the sweat. And you're detoxifying when you do that. But you're also treating your insides, all the cells and tissues, organs and things with that near infrared. And almost like, see, it doesn't warm up the room like a regular sauna. Mm -hmm. You don't walk into a 180 degree room. Everyone will sweat. This warms you. And it goes mm -hmm. through you in a sense. So it's, it's a different technology. Um, there's people that can explain it better than me, but that sort of a thing. Uh, we both take supplements every day from, and we have, we kind of time them. Um, we're not fanatical, but we're pretty fastidious um, about that. I probably take uh, 30 a day, something like that. Uh, cap total, total capsules, mm -hmm. like two of this, two of that, four of those, yeah. one of that different things for, for just, again, to improve bodily function. I want my hormones balanced and my immune system. I want energy. I want all these things, um, balance and, um, it's not in food, but we eat really well. 
So I follow D R E S S. Uh, we, we asked our clients to follow 80%. Um, and that'll be better than anything they ever experienced in their life. And, and if they do it even better, you just get more results, more longevity. You, you fix all the, all the, uh, you improve things and you go from there. So, um, you know, we're pretty, pretty strict about eating out and things. Um, I don't drink excessively unless I have a really good reason. It's typically a good policy. I like that. <laughs> Just teasing. Well, Reed. So my final question is someone listening to this, you know, they're, they're in our community. So they're really interested in health and fitness generally. And I mean, some people may even be interested in like going deeper about this and kind of making this a career someone who didn't come from a traditional medical path and to be able to see you and just your life outside of the wisdom you've provided is inspirational. Where can people learn more about FDN and, and what do you do on that side? It'll give us a little primer on the business side of things. And, and if someone is interested in exploring that as something they might want to do uh, as part of their back part of life. Well, thanks for that opportunity. You know, our, and by the way, we'll have a free gift there if they go for your listeners. Um, it'll be a little book on my dress for health success program. And so if they go to fdntraining.com, fdntraining.com slash fit father mm-hmm. and mothers can go there too. And just cause the book would be the same. Mm-hmm. So, the, uh, and, and an introduction to what we do, my training course is open to all. I've had people who are health coaches and chiropractors and nutritionists, even some medical doctors and osteopaths take the course. I've trained 4,000 people in 50 countries. So we're getting around, but it's open to all. You know, I had an accrediting, we're accredited by at least five different organizations. And, but one of them asked me, um, you know, hey, it'd be better if you didn't accept people, let's say that don't have a college degree in science or so. I said, no, why would I exclude Mrs. Smith who wants to take care of her family and her kids from getting this information? I would never exclude anyone out for any reason. They may never go off and do it for a living and things like that, but they would just doing it on yourself and your family would be worth the price of admission. So why not? And then on top of that, a lot of those people even go, Hey, could I really do this for a living? You know, like help other people. And so we have all the business training. You know, you become a health entrepreneur if you aren't already, if you want to. That's cool. I'm excited because I know someone listening to this is probably being like light bulbs are going off and they're going to be interested to go over there. So there's no pressure. You can even start the course for free. There's a course tour. There's no nothing uh, up to sleeve. You know, it it is what it is. We have an amazing staff. Uh, Everyone who. Uh, comes into the program, does five labs on themselves. I pay for them. You get consultation on them all. So you're, you're, you're living the program cool. because then you got to turn around and teach it back to my staff. And then you go out in the world and you apply it uh, to the public if you want to. Nice. Well, Reed, this has been inspirational for me. I mean, your framework okay. is, is beautiful and uh, I appreciate your time today. This has been a really fun conversation. Well, me too, Doc. And you keep up the amazing work you're doing. I appreciate you, Reed. Thanks so much. Hey there, my friend. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of the Fit Mother Project podcast. If you love what you heard, I have a favor to ask you. Please consider taking 60 seconds right now to leave us a rating and review on our podcast. Leaving us a review is super quick. It only takes a minute. And it's so, so helpful to us as it really boosts this podcast to reach more people who need this information and this message. If you're listening on Apple Podcast, you can leave us a star rating and review. If you're watching on YouTube, you can hit the like button and leave us a comment. Overall, I truly appreciate you being with us here on the podcast. On behalf of me and my entire Fit Mother Project team, we truly feel honored and grateful to support you and your family on your journey to fantastic health. I thank you for your support of this podcast and of this mission. Also, if you're interested in joining our Complete Fit Mother program and becoming an official member of our community, you can visit our website, fitmotherproject.com. And on the Fit Mother site, you'll be able to see our Complete Fit Mother program along with our online store with the best supplements designed for busy moms. And you'll also find a ton of free resources like recipes, workouts, meal plans, and more. God bless you and your family. This is Dr. Anthony Balduzzi signing off. 
I'll catch you on the next episodes of the Fit Mother Project podcast. 